Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hold hands with someone by your left and right and let's pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Just draw from the spirit as an act of faith. You're praying in the spirit. Pray in the spirit with dedicated focus. Pray in the spirit with your eyes on Jesus. Shada branda gabrati ke baratos kubriata baranto sigata. Soli barinta kapriga tia da branda gada. Sadi la brandi ke brandi ke barotos kubriga da baladus. Sati la baranto sobre ke di balakodish. Impra kodi abraga da abraga da baradosh. Sete bala da brada bara do da rabosh. Sobra di bara tu sabra di ke bala ke bara di ke bara dos. Sate bala nta sabra di ke bala ko shadas. Sada bara te ke bara te ke bara tu sobra di ke le bara da gadas. Shala bara di ke bara da gadas bala da bos. Are you praying? Kali bara ta ka bara da bara gadas bara gadas bos. Sabrenta ke barus sate bragada balagadas. Sabena ke de balaga de bagada barada daba. Sabela ke pera ke barato prate ke de balada barados. Sate balenta ke pera kata pras kadli ke baratos. Sabanda sale ke pera kata. Ragada barada baka prante ferete ke de bos. Sele barata kabaratu kapran dege berete ke baladus lebran sada balaga da braga da balaga prade sada balaga da braga da balaga tos emanda sali ke paris breski balasho pratis kali ke pratis yata is open to receive and I receive by faith go ahead and cry my heart is open set to receive my heart is open set to receive my heart is open set to receive that means you are ready to grow that means you are ready to rise that means you are ready to enter into a new experience in the spirit are you praying my heart is set to receive, void of distraction, set to receive, desperate for more. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. The Bible says, for without faith, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it is impossible to please him. 
for he that cometh to God must believe number one that he exists so you are not coming before an idol and then number two that he's a rewarder that means every spiritual activity you find yourself engaging in tonight you know that there is a reward a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord um, I know we have prayed but I just want us to pray one last time we're only days away to the sound of revival UK conference I just want us to take a minute one more time hallelujah God has granted us the privilege once again to take his presence his power his word to the nations and um, you never can pray enough so in one minute as a global family I like us to pray father a fresh encounter rest upon your people breathe upon your people rest upon your people rest upon your people breathe upon your people let your word prevail over the hearts of men in the name of Jesus set the captives free let yokes be broken let destinies be reordered by the spirit let the gospel come with clarity with precision let every dry bone become an exceeding great army set men on fire may they encounter genuine apostolic fire pray for all those who are traveling around the world in the name of Jesus we speak to the air we speak to the road we speak to the sea for their sake we declare safety for their sake we prophesy safety that it will be an unforgettable encounter in the presence of God in Jesus mighty name we pray may the Lord be glorified even in this conference in Jesus name please be seated be seated we began a series um, a two-part series last week greater light and um, I promise that we're going to have another part today to wrap it up and um, we're getting straight to the business of the night and I did promise that I was going to teach us on altars um, so we'll be learning a lot but then I must make an admission before we get straight to the teaching that the subject of altars is not one that can be exhausted in one meeting one service in fact quite honestly while I was um, you know just reviewing my notes again I just felt that hopefully next year God will grant us grace where we have to stretch you know days of meetings this is an apostolic ministry so to stretch days so that it allows us the justice to deal with certain topics um, else you may not gain the kind of spiritual understanding required to walk in victory but um, because I made that commitment um, would still discuss that subject so we're looking at greater light and um, we may not have the liberty to do all the recap but the essence um, is to be able to bring us into higher and deeper spiritual revelations we considered from Genesis 1 last week how that the Bible says that God made two great lights two great lights and then he called one the greater light and he said that one would rule in the night and then for the lesser light it will rule I mean rule in the day the lesser light will rule in the night and then the Bible says that he made the stars also so he made two great lights the greater to rule the day the lesser he said to rule the night um, and we did say that light in scripture speaks of illumination revelation and that light is not at the same extent of illumination if you are in darkness what you need is not greater light what you need is light enough to come out of darkness 
but once you are out of darkness you need the brightness to continue to increase it is the illumination that turns morning to afternoon to the brightness of afternoon and evening is defined as we know by the depletion of that intensity you do not call bright light in the afternoon 12 noon has never been considered nighttime in as much as we know so you literally use the extent of intensity to determine what part of the day you are in if it's pitch darkness you don't call it afternoon in most cases you call it night and sometimes if you don't have the luxury of looking at a timepiece a clock you literally have to depend on light to help you estimate and sometimes you are able to estimate with precision what time of the day you can literally look at the sun shining at its brightest and know that this should be between 12 to 2 a.m and without prophesying you get it right so light can determine seasons light can define moments in time and destiny and we looked at uh, a few things last week particularly zooming down on the creation of man we took man's creation to help us define how we should function uh, in dominion the essence of the teaching last week particularly was to begin to help us understand the foundational components of dominion we said that man was created in the image of god still remember and the likeness of god and we said the image of god talks of his spiritual quality the nature of god are we together as revealed in christ and then the likeness of God talks about the functionality, the functionality, how to function like Christ, not just the form. It talks about the form, two hands, two feet, one head. But beyond that, it talks of the way God functions. And we took our time to say that no believer will walk in dominion if you veer off out of this architecture. Man was designed to function in a certain way. And that the first part of call is that every man must press to see that image find visible expression and i did tell us that the image of god is a compendium of his nature as revealed in his character what we have come to know as the fruit of the spirit that the fruit of the spirit is the resultant um product of that inner walking of the holy spirit through the recreated human spirit and that essentially the fruit of the spirit is love manifested as joy peace patience and so on and so forth i told us that the fruit of the spirit is not just a virtue it is an atmosphere the ideal atmosphere designed for man to thrive is called the fruit of the spirit we challenged ourselves by considering how that the deficiency of just one expression of the fruit of the spirit is what has caused a lot of damage in our world for instance the absence of joy hospitals are managing patients in their variety because of depression and a lot of other things just one the absence of one expression of the fruit of the spirit and i did tell us that man's ideal state that allows for maximum uh, optimized function is to function within that zone called the fruit of the spirit then we looked at the likeness of god how to function like god and we said when it has to do with functioning like god you have to understand that the modus operandi in the kingdom is the word of god the word of god is the foundational basis for functioning like god you still remember that if you do not have access to the word of god the speakings of god there is no basis to be able to function like god because in the kingdom everything the believers walk if is to be like god as revealed in christ it must be by the word man shall not live by bread alone matthew 4 4 but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god hallelujah and we said how that when you want to function like christ uh, there are three dimensions to that operation number one you must learn to speak like christ the first way to function like christ is to speak like christ hallelujah speak like christ now i've lost the scripture there's a scripture coming in my heart is it isaiah 2 20 i cannot remember and if they do not speak after this manner he says it is because there is no light in them very powerful scripture uh, uh, media help me if you can 
I think that's um, Isaiah or so, 220 or thereabout. If you don't find it, that's fine. That if they do not speak after this manner, it is because there is no light. Thank you. 820. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means those who are possessors of light, there is a way that they speak. Hallelujah. Number two, the second way we function like God has revealed in Christ is obedience. 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 And obedience is not valid until there is an instruction to obey. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that mindset was the mindset of obedience, obedience even unto death. And that there are rewards to obedience. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him, giving him a name, an office that is above every other name. And that at that name, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. And the third way we learned to function like God as revealed in Christ is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friend. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12 and verse 1, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. And so I'm just doing a quick recap because it's important that we connect. Um, we're dealing with the matters that help us to walk in dominion. The nature of Christ producing the Christ-like character and that nature, that virtue of the Spirit, and then functioning like Christ. So part two would take it a step further. And um, like I said, the subject of altars, you'll be learning... Um, I've discussed a few things in time past about the altars, but um, my concern now is what to omit and what to leave. And so I decided to zoom down on just one area for the purpose of this series. I believe that would take an extended time to deal with the subject of altars because in my opinion, I think that there is a lot of ignorance among believers. And one of Satan's advantage, please lend me your attention, one of Satan's advantage as far as um, cutting short the glory of the saints is to deceive the saints into believing that um, realities, just because they have been wrought in Christ, they are automatically finished and executed by default. They are finished but not yet executed. There are rules of engagement as you'll be learning. Hallelujah. So this is very important. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. We're looking at tearing down altars. This will be part 2 of greater light. Tearing down altars. I want to teach you how to enforce liberty in the spirit. See, I have set this day. I have set this day. I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. Watch the assignment now. To root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Let's read together now. Ready? One to go. See, I have this day set thee over the nations uh -huh, and over the kingdoms. Number one. And, and, and. Then it says to build and to plant second samuel second samuel verse 20 chapter 24 and verse 25 Shamala kaparada. glory be to the name of the lord let's read together one to go and david built there an altar unto the lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. May the Lord open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Now, just as a background for tonight's discussion, the kingdom operates in mysteries. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven operates in mysteries. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus was teaching and he said, It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, he calls them. But to them, those who are without, it is not given. 
the kingdom of God and its operations are hidden in mysteries. And there is an explanation for that. Um, I have taught you that a mystery is a secret code of operation that is only privy to a people who are part of a group. Are we together now? For instance, the police force. They have a way they operate. They have a modus operandi. If you are not a police officer trained to understand their language, their gestures, their codes, you may be at a loss whereas communication, intelligent communication is happening around you. If you're a military man, they have their modus operandi. They have a way that they speak. They have a way that they communicate. Such that if you claim to be a military man, there are questions they will ask you and in one minute they know you are not because it will be impossible to be a military man well-trained and not understand that modus operandi. Are we learning now? So they are called mysteries. Mysteries. Hidden codes of operation that I are privy to a group of people and among the many reasons why God decided to keep truths light as a mystery is because handling the truths of the kingdom has consequences and demands maturity listen carefully handling the mysteries of the kingdom demand maturity there are consequences to it the mysteries of the kingdom is like holding on to electricity Imagine allowing your two-year-old child to hold on to a high-tension wire. Now, you can imagine the kind of power that is generated from that high-tension wire. And yet, the naive young child just comes to play. And if it's a baby, who most likely want to chew anything they hold in their hands. If you give a little child a knife, he's taking it straight to the mouth. Are we together? Because as far as they, they understand, everything is food. They attempt to chew. Give them money, they chew it. Give them whatever, they chew it. Give them your hand, they chew it. Give them, you know, whatever. Theirs is just to chew whatever comes to them. It will be evil to know that the baby has those tendencies and then sharpen a razor blade and give it to the baby. So you preserve it. It is not out of the house. It is kept somewhere. And as the child grows and demonstrates growth through capacity, you begin to introduce the child to other more sensitive matters. This is why the mysteries of the kingdom are kept and your authorization to access them is your willingness to grow your maturity per time and per season. Are we together now? So don't assume that just because the truths, they are not hidden because God does not want you to know them. No, they are hidden to allow a certain version of you access them. So when you press for growth, he begins to release the truth. The Bible says, line upon line, are we together? Precept upon precept, in layers. You learn the rudiments of the kingdom. Once you are done, you begin to delve into weightier matters. The Bible lets us know that there are certain kinds of foundations. Hebrews chapter 6, you find that Paul was saying, having dealt with these foundational elementary things, he says, let us press further, let us press deeper, let us go to perfection. There are layers of truth like light and one of them is what you'll be learning tonight. Are we together? It is amazing that there are many believers and I say this with every sense of humility and respect who are so ignorant as to the other higher levels of light and weightier spiritual matters. They just live as victims of the consequences of exchanges that happen in the spirit exchanges that happen within their environment they have not sustained the know-how nor the maturity to participate in deciding their lot in life i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus that as you hear the truths that i'm bringing to you may your eyes be open and may you handle this level of truth that will scale you into dominion in experience you believe that shout a loud amen amen, amen and amen so let's see how God will grant us grace as we deal with this topic. Um, there are a few foundational truths I want to put very quickly and then I'll make some recaps. My focus is to teach you how to tear down and to build altars. But uh, the average believer is at a loss completely as to the matters of altars. And the idea that comes to someone, an average believer who may not be trained, uh, when we talk about altars, the first thing we think about is monuments that are built as seen uh, you know through the bible or as seen 
in many cultural practices but it's a lot more than that as you'll be learning so please walk with me as we quickly run through the elementary truths that we need to know so that uh, we deal with the core of our matter tonight and we pray i hope you came ready to pray hallelujah now foundational truth number one satan only has an advantage over the saints on three grounds satan has an advantage over the saints only on three grounds it's important you know this that every time you see satan attempt to strike destroy oppress any individual any family any believer for that matter even if in christ there are only three grounds as revealed in the bible that authorize satan or gives him a loophole into the life and destiny of believers number one ignorance please write that down number one ignorance the first ground upon which satan can met out his rebellious activities his activity of stealing killing and destroying in the life of believers is called ignorance number two disobedience disobedience these are foundational truths you must understand number one ignorance number two disobedience number three covenants that satan has only three grounds upon which he attempts to deal with the saints number one ignorance ignorance of the truth the ways of god number two disobedience refusing to comply with the terms that commit god number three covenants of all of these three the most far-reaching in terms of his effects are covenants the reason is because in many regards ignorance has a personal consequence to an individual and most often stops at the individual disobedience can affect an individual perhaps extends to a few people but covenants are transgenerational that means even when the individual who was actively involved in setting up that system is no longer there it becomes a law that the realm of the spirit recognizes no matter how long are we together now this is very powerful ignorance disobedience and covenants the bible is scattered all through mentioning the subject of altars and we see the patriarchs from genesis down even to the new testament the ideas may change but the the concept of covenant has remained consistent all through scripture we'll just walk through a few scriptures just to give you a scriptural frame that this subject of covenant is scriptural is deep and demands anybody who wants to walk in dominion and understand this business of victory victory over demonical forces walking in the blessing of the lord in experience it is impossible no matter who you are you cannot reign in life if you do not understand altars genesis 8 20 that is the first mention in the bible of the word altar so we'll run through a few scriptures to give you um, a doctrinal understanding the bible says and noah builded an altar you have that word there unto the lord and he took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings where on the altar genesis chapter 12 and verse 7 please walk with me as we write the lord appeared unto abraham and said unto your seed watch this now unto your seed will i give this land and the bible says in response to what god said abraham did not just say i receive and then to start dancing around he, the bible says he built an altar in honor to that statement who appeared unto him genesis 13 from verse 8 genesis 13 from verse 8 did i get that right I think I must have missed something. Uh, let's go to Genesis 26 and verse 25. My apologies on that. Genesis 26, 25. This is Isaac now. The Bible says, and he builded an altar. Are you seeing that now? 
that Abraham taught his son Isaac that the way dominion happens in this kingdom is by understanding altars. Isaac built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tents there and there Isaac's servant built a well. It was about a well but he focused on an altar. It was about a well, digging a well to make for sufficiency but not without an altar. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 7. Genesis 35 and verse 7. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. This is Jacob now. We see the concept of altars. You see Abraham, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are models. Every single one of them was taught that dominion within their time cannot happen without the awareness and to know how to engage this mystery of altars. Who is learning already? I'm showing you consistent in scripture. First Samuel chapter 14, please, and verse 35. 1 Samuel 14 and verse 35. Now we get to Saul, and the Bible says, And Saul built an altar unto the Lord, from Noah to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, down the line. I just jumped this for reference. I can show you literally in almost everyone who did business with God, everyone who became mighty and commanded every level of dominion there was an altar go ahead please give us that scripture he built an altar unto the lord the same was the first altar that he built unto the lord and of course we considered already second samuel chapter 24 and verse 25 david now there was a plague over the land israel and people were dying and there was i mean there was defeat eminent and he said no this is not about being a warrior or not there must be something ah you will learn a lot tonight may god open your eyes the bible says and david as a cure to the plague he built an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague stayed from israel what is an altar what is an altar? Let's recap on a few definitions very quickly. An altar is a place, a platform, or a system. A place, a platform, or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. An altar is a place, an altar is a platform, an altar is a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. On legal grounds. I'm reminded of Luke chapter 1, I think from verse 10 to 11. Luke chapter 1, 10 and verse 11. Luke 1. The Bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying without outside at the time of incense. Verse 11. There appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The angel came and he was standing at the right side of the altar. There was a basis for the angel to visit. Are we together now? Now, there are deeper explanations, but I'm cutting a lot of things because I want us to quickly get to the business of what we need to deal with tonight. But it's important for you to know that when we talk about the word altar, don't allow the word to just create a lot of complications. It means a place. It means a platform. It also means a system where the realm of the spirit and the physical realm make contact on legal or legitimate basis now as you know man was created by god as spirit are we together and that spirit contains solical faculties of will emotions and intellect and that spirit with the soul is resident within a body are we together 
it is that tripartite manifestation that gives man the legitimacy to function upon the earth that any entity that does not have a spirit living in a body with solical expressions is considered illegal upon the earth are we together now from the time god builds that system it became illegal and it became illegitimate for any spirit including god he bound himself with that law that he cannot just come as spirit into the earth to do anything at all there must be a system that honors that that compatibility are we together now yes and that's where the concept of altars came in the concept of altar is man upon the earth as the legitimate custodian the legitimate steward on earth giving the realm of the spirit access to do any kind of business within the earth and it would not be considered illegal because man who was now given stewardship over the earth has his participation there this is very powerful it means every operation you find upon the earth today spiritually speaking with physical effects of course whether you consider them legitimate or not based on the provisions of scripture that it is powered because a law was honored a human vessel came into partnership with spirits are we together dead or alive that became a gateway and authorization for spirits to act within a life a family a predefined territory on legal basis so altar is a place an altar is a platform and a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm number two an altar is a platform that authorizes laws and spirits to function upon the earth an altar is a platform that authorizes laws l-a-w-s spiritual laws it is not only spirits that are given access through altars laws are given access through altars to function it's a platform that authorizes laws and spirits to function on earth can i give you a third definition number three an altar is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained in fact where covenants are initiated activated and maintained add that down please a platform where covenants are initiated where covenants are activated and covenants are maintained covenants must be initiated they must have a starting point they must be activated to give them the power the legitimacy to be acted out and must be maintained creating sustainability hallelujah now i wrote here and you may recall that altars can be physical monuments as we have in the old testament stones with all kinds of things on it altars can be institutions an institution can be an altar altars can be men individuals themselves an individual can be an altar hmm. altars can also be non-material platforms like ideas and suggestions ideas can be altars suggestions can be altars so the bible says we cast down every high thing and every thought there are systems of authorization so i'm saying that altars can be physical monuments as we find in many traditional especially trado african practices altars can be institutions altars can be men altars can be non-material platforms altars can also be thoughts and ideas 
Now, let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone you see in Bible days, in modern history, and even today, who is demonstrating any level of sustainable dominion in righteousness, I can tell you that that individual has mastered the art of rebuilding righteous altars. Please listen carefully. Or is a beneficiary of someone who has mastered the art of rebuilding altars. There is no dominion without the knowledge of altars. There is no true liberty if we do not know and learn how to tear down altars. Hallelujah. Altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression upon the earth and among men. All kinds of spirits. Demon spirits are not the only spirits that function upon the earth. Angels are spirits. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. God himself is spirit. Hallelujah. There is such a thing called the spirits of just men. And there are people who have been granted access to such visitations. It is in the Bible that we see that Elijah, Moses and Elijah, remember the Mount of Transfiguration? Are we together now? Yes. It was not just a vision because the prayerless disciples saw it. So it was not that they were praying and their senses were heightened. They were sleepy, yet they saw it. They said, ah, this one that Elijah and Moses have appeared, let's prepare a blanket for them because I'm sure they'll be tired after praying. You can imagine their thoughts, but at least they saw it. Altars allow all kinds of spirits. Please look at me, ladies and gentlemen. There are all kinds of spirits in this venue right now. There are all kinds of spirits in our families. There are all kinds of spirits in Nigeria, Africa, and all of them have a basis for their coming, a basis for their function, and a reason for their coming. Are we together now? When Jacob slept, pay attention please. I'm building on something that is very important. He saw a ladder that was ascending and descending. And if you read earlier, you know, chapters, right at that place, Los, that would later be called Bethel, his Abraham, his father, had built an altar there. Are we together now? And many years later, it had become a portal, a gateway. Angelic activities were happening, ascending and descending. All the spirits that cause mayhem, you see, they don't just come. There is, there is a negotiation that happens. Families are not just oppressed with all kinds of spirits. No, they don't just come. They are invited. It's a negotiation that happens. And only those who know how to get to that table and wipe some old pages and say, it does not know what matter what happened before my arrival. But now that I am here, there needs to be a legal basis of stopping certain things. Emotional proverbs like one day go better is a total waste of time. Not in the presence of altars. The business of dominion is the business of altars. Spiritual transactions. Negotiations that translate to victory or defeat. Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Let's hurry. Write this down. The major assignment of an altar. I want you to start that statement for those who are watching those who are following we are discussing tearing down altars the major assignment of an altar any altar at all is to give authorization to give continuity or discontinuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic. I'll take it again. You need to get this definition down. The major assignment of any altar at all is to give authorization, 
to give continuity or to bring discontinuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or it is demonic powerful the assignment of altars is to give authorization number two to give continuity or number three to bring discontinuity to any spiritual activity upon the earth whether it is godly or demonic who is understanding me so far so that altars have a singular assignment to give authorizations to give continuity or like we'll be learning tonight to bring discontinuity to any spiritual operation in one word an altar is a platform in one sentence an altar is a spiritual negotiation table an altar is a platform it is a spiritual negotiation table when we talk about altars don't let the name confuse you we are talking about spiritual negotiation tables There are two kinds of altars essentially based on the results that they produce. There are two kinds of altars. Let's hurry up. Based on the results that they produce. Number one, there's what we call evil or demonic altars. Evil or demonic altars. We are classifying altars into two based on the results that they allow to happen to an individual based on the results they are allowed to happen to a family, based on the results they are allowed to happen to a church, a ministry, a nation, a community. Number one, there are evil or demonic altars. What does this mean? A system of authorization that allows the operation of darkness to prevail within a life, a family, a community on legal grounds. I'll take that again. That an evil or demonic altar is a system of authorization set up to allow the operation of darkness, demons, operations of Satan within a life, within a family, within a community on legal basis. Demonic altars. Demonic altars causing mayhem consistently causing setbacks consistently please look at me there are individuals there are families you will be learning who are victims of these demonic altars there is absolutely nothing they do that works give that person a job his creativity is there his intelligence is there but in the presence of a demonic altar something will happen within that company that brings the person out to such a person, favor or defeat, or whatever, it makes no difference. Whether you give the person money or leave the person in that situation, the lot has been determined already. Because like you'll be learning, altars have a voice and their voices give instructions and the realm of the spirit obeys their instructions to the latter. If they say destroy, that's the instruction that will happen until someone else says restore if they say create setback among all the men even if it's after 100 years that is the result that is the instruction that will be obeyed altars have voices and the realm of the spirit once it is legitimate it will obey it someone came tonight and as i'm teaching there's an anger rising in your spirit because this negotiation table you have to join today and say no way it comes to an end this evil speakings against my destiny evil speakings against my family in spite of the fact that i am safe i am not yet walking in the experience of liberty evil or demonic altars you find the presence of these altars in lives in families in communities do you know the reason why like you'll be learning we have invented a name for the consistency 
of obedience to the instructions that altars bring we call them patterns patterns is an instruction that the same outcome must manifest in the life of people within a predefined family a predefined region that is why it doesn't matter whether one person is in america and another person is in russia it's the same experience they will have because it's an instruction coming from the realm of the spirit are we together evil altars demonic altars number two we have what we call righteous or godly altars this is the second category of altars righteous or godly altars someone watching online you need to ask someone around your house to come and sit down and listen because this is an answer to the many tragic situations happening around many families godly or righteous altar like the negative side it is also a system of authorization that is set up watch this to allow the operations of the holy spirit the operation of angelic forces the operations of the word of god to work profitably for that individual or that family a righteous or godly altar is a system of authorization a system of cooperation set up that allows the Holy Spirit that allows the angelic realm or angelic beings that allows the Word of God to work profitably for an individual the Bible shows us clearly that there are these two kinds of altars Judges chapter 6 please 25 and 26 And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Koinonia, follow carefully, take thy father's young bullock, this is Gideon, and even the second bullock of seven years old, it says, and throw down the altar of Baal. Did you read that in your Bible? There is such a thing called the altar of Baal. That altar was funding something that was happening in the life of God's people and oppressing the people. Are we together now? It says that who built it? Your father, read it there. That Gideon's father, sincerely maybe, built that altar. And most likely, perhaps, maybe the person that was even gone already, and yet the altar was still speaking. There were people who were profiting because of this altar. God himself said it's called the altar of Baal. He says, cut it down by the grove that is in it. And then when you are done, he says, now build an altar unto the Lord. Don't leave it there. Two kinds of altar. Because in any case, if you want things to change, you don't just tear down. You also build up. Now you understand what he told Jeremiah? That I have set you over kingdoms and I have given you power to tear down, to uproot and then to rebuild. Let's finish that scripture. It says, build an altar unto the Lord upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the groove and then which you cut down and so on and so forth. So we see here that there are demonic altars and there are godly altars of righteousness. This is very powerful how do you know that an altar is functioning in a life i will tell you how do i know what kind of altar is at work or is powering the results in my life you can know the presence of an altar in any life by the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen whether positively or negatively the consistency of patterns that happen widespread poverty widespread prosperity widespread increase widespread defeat widespread open doors everybody in the family 10 children 
one is in South Africa, one is in Nigeria, one is in America, and all of them are mysteriously prospering. Of course, doing their due diligence, but that there is a mysterious force backing them. Consistency of patterns and occurrences. Please lend me your attention. There are various kinds of occurrences that believers can use to test the presence of altars and to test what kind of altar is speaking in your life. Hallelujah. I think it was when I was doing let them have dominion or so, I thought about a few things that can, can follow people. There are families their own issue is mysterious occurrence of sicknesses, bodily infirmity, to the point that medicine has agreed today that you literally, there is, through genetics, there can be transference of problems. Is that true? A doctor can look at you and say, high blood pressure, do you have a case of this in your family? You say, yes, so, yes. My father died of high blood pressure. My grandfather died of high blood pressure or my grandfather died of prostate. My father died of prostate and they say, ah, you're a young man. That means you need to begin to manage this. Let me tell you the truth. Once you see consistency of occurrence is beyond willpower. There is an altar. There is an altar. How about those who never have longevity of impact? They will start, but they never finish. Something eventually destroys them. If it's in ministry, there will be one trouble somewhere. Some trouble, some scandal, some, something that tears them down. If he's a businessman, one trouble, in one day, he can turn from grass to grace. So you find out that when those people achieve things, they can't celebrate it because they suspect that the story is not over. And they are right. Once that altar gives an instruction, even if it's after 30 years, you will crash like rain coming upon the ground. Only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to be very comfortable to listen tonight. And don't take my teaching personal. There's no point finding any offense. Are we together? Yes. There are people like that. I've seen brilliant people who love God with all their heart. At the point of writing their final exams. When counseling them, they will tell you. After conducting tutorials for others, they just blanked out like that. Until everything was done, it was as if they came back. What happened to me? There is a speaking. An instruction was given in the spirit. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. Listen to what I'm saying because God sent me. Someone needs to be free this night. Hallelujah. Now, these altars, how many of you know that what you call IT today, it was built based on the system of altars. It's a programming, it's an algorithm. How do you own your laptop? The laptop does not know you, but it knows instructions. When you press the power button to you, you call it a power button. But at the back end, there is an algorithm that makes the laptop behave a certain way if you press that button. Anybody that presses that button, it will obey. That's how it is in the spirit. Are we together? Isn't it amazing that technology has borrowed from the system of altars? They literally, without being there present, they can use algorithms to not just predict, but explain things. It's been used today to create all kinds of things. Business is literally, the social media runs on this concept, altars. Hallelujah. Now, the problem is that if it is unfortunate for you, you can know what instruction was given in the realm of the spirit for your defeat by the patterns that happen. To others, it is not sickness, but they will never make it. It doesn't, if you try to help them and you are not powerful, that altar turns to you and fights you. Have you seen people like that? Now, this is where sometimes the prophetic makes a mistake. So they say certain things like, ah, you have this lady or this guy or this friend or this boss or this, um, um, employee brought bad luck they are not lying 
they are trying to explain that the people were innocent but they do not know that every time men come together they bring is altars that come together it's not just individuals when the devil wants to destroy you he looks for what is deficient based on the speakings of the altar fighting you and finds another person who has a speaking that will produce a double problem and bring both of you together now you may not know what the confusion is about beyond men men are conveyors of altars and these altars carry instructions are we together do you believe what I'm, I'm teaching you this is very powerful so you find out that there are certain altars that are like embargoes on people you 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 become part of a business the business starts going down and it's not a product I'm not, now listen 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 there is a place for lack of diligence and non-compliance to the laws of success are we together my discussion is with respect to the fact or based on the assumption that all other factors like diligence and hard work is in place are we together because if you are lazy perpetually even that act of perpetual laziness is sponsored by an altar is supposed to keep you non-productive for a reason there are families as soon as someone rises everybody starts becoming sick and the nature of the sickness is such that it will gob all the money and until they get into debt then something happens either the person dies or many other people become sick once there is poverty nobody becomes poor once they don't have money or nobody becomes sick once there's no money but let a breakthrough just come it's like an alarm system in the spirit and things begin to happen some of you keep wondering why is it that it is when certain things happen it's like there's somebody watching me it is not somebody it's a law the law is precise it does not get tired don't allow ignorance destroy you and <clears throat> well hallelujah just when your boss wants to lift you this altar strike again and the devil uses your face to oppress the man he wakes up in the morning because he does not have spiritual intelligence he assumes it is you he just comes to the office sad you said i should meet you don't come to my office again and you are wondering what did i do wrong my brother it's not what you did wrong it's what was there before your arrival that if you do not understand and deal with you will live a defeated you can be jumping and say i'm born again you are right but you see activating your liberty is based on rules of engagement who is learning you detect the presence of altars by the consistency of patterns consistency of negative patterns i have seen people who either by their own making or because god brought them into a family where they enjoyed a covering their lives began to speak such profound blessings you would see that the woman is only cleaning her job maybe she did not go to school she's only a sweeper but do you know the day she's sweeping that's the day a big man will pass and say i i like the way you are sweeping i've been thinking of someone to bless among the sweepers how many children do you have four send them to me i want to sponsor them and you see that happen by the time you are angry and say let's move out to another department you move out to another department while she's scrubbing the toilet the man who will help her comes to ease himself again is once you see consistency this is what jacob carried laban said no we switch this thing the result is still the same because there are patterns and it is a product of altars laban tried to cheat him laban tried to double up who it did not change anything because there is an instruction they are taken for a prey and none say it restore listen let me tell you this i don't want to bore you with history i'm doing a, a summary it's, it's paining me that i'm jumping so many important things but i want to tell you this you don't have to be bad or evil to be a victim of evil altars 
For most people, they came into fraternity with dark powers in ignorance. They were sincerely looking for help like some of our great grandfathers. They were not evil people. They needed their crops to be produced. They needed protection from wars. They had all kinds of diseases that would strike them and they would die. And there was no advancement in medicine. And the only way they knew was through priests and mediums. They would tell you that there's such a person. This whole community come into a covenant. The spirits will protect you. In return, your children, children, to the fourth generation will serve them. And the innocent parents said, fine, it's a negotiation table. The realm of the spirit witnessed it. You were still in the womb of eternity when it happened. But the realm of the spirit is precise, like your phone number. It will find you no matter where you go, except you know how to rebuild an altar that secures you. Listen, I wish I were lying to you. This work of ministry, bar. Ministry is like medicine. You have the opportunity to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. You have the opportunity to examine very serious situations by the privilege of God's grace, not just by study. I have seen firsthand the presence of altars. I have seen people. There have been people myself that I vowed to help and in a mysterious way, I forgot. I had to pray and say, no, this, can, this has to be demonic. And they say, sir, I'm not offended. That's how it has been. It's been like that. Nobody who says you will help me. That you even remember is a miracle. So when you tell some people receive favor during miracle service, don't blame them for not lifting their hands. They are used to pain. They know instinctively that there is a voice. You see these things happen even in marriage. Wonderful, beautiful lady. A gentleman just comes. How are you? Let me see your parents. Uh -huh. The altar does not touch you when you are in school. Go and read. If you like, become a professor. The altar was not programmed to speak against your education. It was programmed to speak against the children that come from you. And then you find out the day you want to go and see your parents, something happens. You hear that the man just became mad. He didn't just become mad, my brother. You see that? everything that is not of God everything speaking over everyone's life programming trouble in the name of Jesus you must be released this night <laughs> hear me there are negative speakings and the instruction is that no child must bury their children it is no parent must bury their children it is children that, that bury their parents. So you get into a community. The oldest person is 45. Because there is no length of days. You get into another family. And the old people remain old. But they never have children. Where are the children here? Something always happens. And they just die. Do you know? If you don't have spiritual intelligence. If you like become a pastor. You stand on stage sincerely preaching Jesus with all your heart. Those altars don't care. The only thing that brings them down is light, not sentiments. Hallelujah. I have watched this thing destroy people. I've watched it destroy good people. Good people. Good people. Great grandmother was raped mysteriously and she loved the Lord. The mother did not hear the story and did not know the story. But as she grew up, something happened. Maybe as a house held, she was still raped again. Now the daughter, third generation, they are not even aware. They have not discussed the story with one another. The day they now discuss it, they are all shocked. Different actors, the same instruction. The same instruction. There are others who have destinies of kingdom financiers. Their great-grandparents were colleagues with those who are billionaires today. It was in their prophetic destiny to be financial apostles. But there was a speaking. They would tell you that some of the 
before all this bank started my father was in the meeting and you are saying where's your father now he's dead why are we in poverty they will show you pictures of them and the founders of companies but there was an instruction never rise beyond a certain height listen i know what i'm saying if i'm cracking jokes with you i will crack jokes and we'll just laugh so you find people that when you speak with them you are asking but sir your issue is not laziness your issue is not lack of productivity why are you at this level because with the kind of value you have you should be at the presidency or you should be at un and they say my brother it's not only me my grandfather was a genius he graduated with first class my father was a this i have phd all my four ch children have phd but nobody can bring a decent meal I remember many years ago in Port Harcourt, I met a woman truly wrapping up her PhD. She was working as a security person because she had to make ends meet. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. You can detect the presence of altars. I'm not scaring you. There is a way out. But I want you to think for one moment the many things that have happened around your life. Mysterious, consistent evil programmings. Whether towards you, whether towards your family, whether towards those you know. And sometimes it becomes more embarrassing when you are a Christian. This is why you must learn to walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god he's not talking about unbelievers but that even for the people of god there remained a rest look at me there are people and i don't i don't want you to get sad like i said don't take it personal how many of you know that there were people in this abuja when land was five hundred thousand? till today they don't own a house it was not carelessness something tied their hands they attended every seminar on real estate you know they even helped to facilitate it till today they don't have a house when houses when lands today that are hundreds of millions of naira were just less than one million and it's not that it was lack some of them even had breakthroughs doors were open five million ten million they cannot tell what they did with the money until today their children are begging you are passing a road and they'll tell you you see this federal government road it used to be land that i would have gotten at a platter of gold what then happened life is not as haphazard as you think life is not as sentimental as you think let me tell you the truth life is largely a product of programmings and instructions programmings and instructions done by you or done on behalf of you instructions and programmings that produce blessings that produce troubles number three and this is where I want to focus on tonight how to uproot demonic altars and how to set up righteous altars this is what I want to dwell into. How to uproot demonic altars. I hope that another time when we have to discuss, by God's grace, I promise you that we'll do justice, we'll revisit everything again so that you will learn this concept of altars. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me Overcome, I am victorious. 
me show you the operation of altars. Romans 8 verse 1. Open our eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus. Shalimara sobrantika palako se brekidis. Krato sali karindoski malahaski anda. Light. There is therefore now no condemnation. Please pay attention now. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Please read verse 2 with me as loud as you can. One, two, go. One more time. So, Paul is saying, I have now experienced liberty. But that this liberty has dynamics 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 i'm seeing fire rising from the ground I'm seeing fire rising from the ground In the name of jesus ah, tonight god is judging altars judging altars in the name of jesus i'm still fire rising just like rising from the ground in the name of jesus let me speak already anyone who has been bound by any satanic any demonic altar in the name of jesus as you hear me speak now may those influences over your life give way forever give way forever give way forever please be seated be seated let's hurry up Are we together? So the Bible says, first three words, Romans 8, 2, for the law, for the law. The word law, L-A-W, there's an interesting word that I want us to consider. It doesn't mean the principle. It doesn't mean law like Old Testament. The word law, there's the word operation. Replace the word law there with operation. Then you understand it now for the operation of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free from the operation of sin and death you get you get it now so he's not just speaking of laws he's saying there is a programming that's another word for the programming of the spirit of life in christ jesus had set me free from the programming so what put him in bondage programmings what brought him liberty programmings are we together there is an operation that leads to the experience of liberty there is another operation that leads to and keeps an individual perpetually in bondage now people are victims of programmings people are victims of not just circumstances but programmings there are laws paul is saying the law of the spirit are you seeing that he had to use another law to replace another law another operation there was an operation called the law of the spirit of sin and death but that for you to experience liberty they had to bring another law called the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus and that is what set me free now i've told you that evil altars and all demonic altars can be pulled down this is something you need to know all evil altars can be pulled down and all righteous altars can be set up in place of those evil altars so know that for a fact that no matter how long an evil altar is it can be torn down it can be pulled down even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ now write this down please altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life if allowed altars walk by speaking instructions that means every altar has a voice altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life if allowed 
they walk by speaking instructions they program instructions in the realm of the spirit those instructions are executed by spirits executed by men executed by systems and structures for their final delivery to your life good or bad tearing down altars now i taught you something that i want to quickly recap so that you understand there is something called the reflection principle in theology please look at me they call it the reflection principle that means everything happens because of something it submits to are we together now so the moon shines because it submits to the light and the glory of the sun are we together when you see a tree grow spring forth and is producing fruits there is still an invisible part to that tree that you do not see and that is what powers the tree are we together now so the health of the tree or the health of the root is reflected in what produces the kind of fruit the kind of um uh, you know good structure that you see on that tree he shall be like a tree that is planted so because of where it is planted and the nourishment it gets from it it will now become like a tree that is flourishing are we together now i said that to tell you that every altar evil altar now please look at me there is a central altar that powers every evil altar you need to know this there is a central altar that powers every evil altar that means it doesn't matter which family those evil altars are speaking from there is a central altar that powers those evil altars and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity and there are three levels of sin very quickly now number one there's personal sin personal sin shortcomings as an individual number two there are territorial sins it is not something committed by an individual but it is something that is territorial like Nineveh are we together now if you were Nineveh even if you were a baby you will still suffer are we together there are times that the concept of sin that attacks the people is not personal sin you can sin as a person if we say we have no sin the Bible says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us are we together but if we confess our sins the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness but there are territorial sins if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land there are territorial sins like Sodom and Gomorrah Genesis chapter 18 when you read from verse 21 to 23 the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was not just the sin of an individual it was a territorial sin number three there is sin based on foundation and bloodlines sin based on foundations and bloodlines based on foundations and bloodlines i think that should be psalm 11 verse 3 give us psalm 11 verse 3 and let me see if the foundations be destroyed what can the not what can men what can the righteous do even the if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do this is very powerful so all evil altars depend on this one altar to be able to function is called the altar of sin and iniquity you know what that means if the altar of sin and iniquity is destroyed all other altars cannot be powered they depend on the strength of this existing altar to fund and receive their energy to manifest that means no matter how you destroy you pray you bind you cast individual altars once this altar is still at work sin and iniquity this altar 
whether personal, territorial, or through bloodline, you will not be able to do much. It's the reason why people pray and shout sincerely and it looks like the realm of the spirit has no regard and has no respect for what they say. Now, very quickly, all godly altars similarly are powered by this one major altar. It is called the throne of grace. The throne of grace. There is such an altar where God sits himself is an altar. It's called the throne of grace. This is the altar that powers every other altar. The throne of grace. The throne of grace. The throne of grace. The throne of grace. There are many things that happen in the throne of grace. One of it is the blood of Jesus. I think Philippians 2 12. Ye are come unto Mount Zion. Verse 12, he says, um, did I get that right? Hebrews chapter what now? The blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Find it for me, please. Ye are come unto Mount Zion. <coughs> the blood of sprinkling. Thank you. Unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, 23. To the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, the judge of all, the spirits of just men made perfect, 24. Yeah. The, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, all found there, that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. There are things that he speaks better than the blood of Abel. Now, please listen carefully. If you cannot access the throne of grace, there is no basis for powering any other authorization. The realm of the spirit only respects your speaking to the degree to which that speaking is connected to the throne of grace. The Bible says we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy mercy is found at the throne of grace and the grace to help in time of need is also found at the throne of grace are you learning so far now listen carefully please you stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar you stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another righteous altar that speaks consistent with God's desire for you. You stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar. Now, look up please. Today, altars for us is not to rebuild stones and physical monuments are we together yes altar for the believer today in christ listen carefully there is a big difference when abraham isaac and jacob spoke of altars they meant physical monuments with animals upon them sacrifices as demanded by god but today we don't do all of those things unfortunately and i say this with all due respect i hear that there are many believers or pseudo christian sects that are still involved in building physical monuments with all due respect it's not mine to condemn anybody but consistent with the word of god those things have been abolished the idea of altars for the believer now is not rebuilding physical things like putting a stone behind your house now i know that most of us have for instance what you call your prayer altar and what you mean is a room or a place you have dedicated unto God. That is fine. Provided you don't idolize the place. Are we together now? Yes. If it's a place for convenience, dedicated between you and God to spend time, that is fine. But where you now idolize it and it looks like you cannot meet God any other place and you create a ritual out of it, it now becomes destructive. Are we together now? Because worship today for us in Christ is not just in a place. It is a state, a spiritual state. 
beyond a place. You can be in church and yet you are not in church because you are not really there. Are we together? Jesus said a time will come you will neither worship on this mountain or come here or do this and that but that the Father is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is more concerned about a state beyond a place. You can be in the right place but not in the, with the right heart. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were gathered in one accord. They were in one place, but they were in one accord. Their accord was greater than the place. The Holy Ghost did not come because the name of the place was Upper Room. It was the state. There was a state of unity and expectation and faith that allowed the Holy Spirit to come. Are we together now? So there's nothing wrong in having a place dedicated in your home, your office, and so on and so forth, provided you do not build monuments out of it. But now, I'm teaching you that there is a system. When the believer talks of altars, you are talking of speakings and programmings. Listen carefully. Speakings and programmings. Speakings and programmings. Not physical objects. So when I say... I have an altar that means that your speakings and your programmings are we together they have become consistent enough to create instructions in the realm of the spirit that are pro destiny pro kingdom are we together now yes if you tell me you have an altar meaning you build some stones it doesn't matter where you brought the stones from are we together there are so many things in my house. I have a simulation of the Ark of Covenant. It was given to me as a gift. So you see the Ark of Covenant. I don't worship it. It's just there to remind me that we have come a long way walking with God. Are we together now? If I'm eating bread and it falls on the Ark, I'll carry it and keep eating it. I'm not going to throw it away because it fell on my Ark of No, Are you getting the point now? So it's beautiful. I like to see it. You know, it reminds me just, I have all these things around my house, eagles representing this, lion representing this, but you don't worship it. The challenge is when you now build a monument and now come and stand kneeling down in front of it, ah, you have gotten into idolatry. You are worshiping an unknown God. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because there have been all kinds of teachings about altars. And so that you do not generalize, there is a unique thought that we are trying to establish here. That altar for a believer now is not just about physical monuments. Even though, truly, the altars you may be cons considering, wanting to tear down, may have physical expressions with priesthood managing it. But that you do not counter that altar by building another physical monument. There is a more superior way of approaching it. And this is what I want to show you now. Pray in the spirit in one minute and ask the Lord to open your eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Are you praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Right? How to tear down altars and how to rebuild altars of righteousness. We've established so far. That with respect to the outcomes that these altars produce in the life of individuals and families, we have demonic or evil altars, we have godly or righteous altars. Altars being platforms, being tables of negotiations. Hallelujah. So when you say, I have an altar, it means you have created a platform. And that the platform is created for the believer through words. Don't forget. Altars are built through words, largely, principally through speakings. Altars are built through words, not just physical monuments. Now, there are actions of obedience, and I'll come there, but the principal way that believers build altars is through speakings. Now, there is a law in the spirit I want to introduce to you now. This law 
was honored even by Jesus is called the law of substitution. The law of substitution. That means that there can never be a void at any given time. When there's no darkness, there is light. There can never be a time where there is neither darkness or light. If it's not morning, it's night. Are we together? Are, are we together now? Yes. The law of substitution. So, the law of substitution says that with respect to this now, watch this now, that you cannot stop outcomes by stopping them. You stop outcomes by replacing what should be. Are we together now? It's, it's you are substituting evil for good, not stopping the entire process. The concept of altars was so designed that at no point in your life should there be any void. That means if there is no personal altar set up by you, the altar before becomes your status quo. Are you getting the point now? You don't have to consciously set up a negative altar. If you do not rise up to define your possibility, any altar available can hurt you and harm you. For instance, you don't need to plant weed. No, the seeds are scattered everywhere. All it takes is for rain to fall and you begin to see weeds grow in your farm. Are we together now? But there is a way that you can see certain farms and gardens manicured. It looks like weeds never come up. It's not true. The potential for weeds are there. It's only that the gardener has taken responsibility to do something upon that farmland every day. So in your experience, you never find weed there. But it does not mean weed cannot grow. Are we together? If at any point the gardener is careless and leaves the farm, then you find out that weeds grow. So you can discover a garden that for one year, you never see it bushy. And based on your experience, you believe that weeds don't grow. Weeds can grow anywhere. But the gardener, if he's not putting insecticides, he's mowing the grass, he's doing something, there is an action that is being engaged to keep that garden that way. It's called the law of substitution. Now, please look at me. Most believers, and, and I, 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 I say this with humble submission, humble submission humble submission most believers have been taught to tear down altars and then not have any altar around their life again so whether by prayer by breaking of curses generational curses whatever it is and so they say in the name of jesus i am free and then sometimes we men of god sincerely after praying for the person the person falls rolls on the ground and then he stands up and he says that's it, you are done. Go, you are free. Um, you are right, but you are wrong. Do you know why? Because according to the law of substitution, there must be a voice speaking. An altar must be speaking at every given time. If it is not the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, it is the law of sin and death. There is no such thing as void. Where nothing is happening, neither good nor bad, it does not exist. Maybe just in the mind of the individual. Who is learning so far? I'm saying this because there is a responsibility component to administering liberty that if the saints are not taught, they will remain defeated. It doesn't matter the kind of deliverance that is conducted. It doesn't matter the breaking of yokes and curses and whatever it is. Refer to my message, Complete Deliverance. I teach you there that there are three levels of deliverance. Number one, casting out the spirit influences. And then number two, there is what we call deliverance through transformation. The ministry of light. Transforming you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the final phase is called the discipline of conformity. Where you have to now use your will, empowered by the grace of God, to walk in keeping with the factors that keep those spirits at bay. Show me anyone who practices these three things. You will experience complete deliverance. For most people, their focus is the first area. Man of God, pray for me. I have bad dreams. Or I have all kinds of patterns. Please help me. And truly, 
you pray for the person, cast out that spirit, and then the person is free, and the person returns back. You know why the demons are not afraid? Because they know that there are two other steps that were ignored. Deliverance through transformation, the discipline of conformity. So after praying for that person, if you're a man of God here, learn this. When you minister to someone and is free from demonic spirits, you don't just tell him, okay, that's all. Whether you are serious with God or not, whether you are serious with church, just go. He will experience momentary testimonies. By the next week, he will return back and say, you are such a powerful man of God. You prayed for me. That week, I experienced promotion. But the spirit still have a legal access to return because the programming in his mind Remember my teaching that your mindset is your contribution to your own failure or your own success. Your mindset that has not been renewed can partner with those spirits and attract them back again. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? So you stop the speakings of altars by raising another system of authorization that speaks something otherwise. So for instance, an altar that speaks untimely death, an altar that speaks defeat, watch this, an altar that speaks sicknesses, an altar that speaks failure, an altar that speaks all kinds of trouble. You don't just say in the name of Jesus, I've come by the blood, I destroy this altar, it will never find place in my life again. Uh -uh. What else are you speaking? The Bible says the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things not speak another not not just speaks something was speaking before it came since the blood of jesus was not there the blood of abel was speaking and the blood of abel speaks judgment the blood of abel speaks vengeance are we together now yes there's no time to go there you would have seen that when cain killed abel the blood of abel was speaking and it spoke and god had it he came and said cain this blood is crying to me to speak vengeance and on account of that a curse was released upon him he even had to cry and say it's too much upon me everyone that sees me will hurt me and a mark was put upon him even at that he still became a fugitive and a vagabond it was Cain according to scripture that was the first spearheader of the campaign of rebellion against God after the fall of man the Bible says Cain knew his wife and she bore him a son called Enoch are we together now and now they built a city he built a city after that name that was what eventually graduated to what you would call the tower of babel in genesis 11. i speak the blood 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 I speak the blood, the blood, eternal cleansing blood. You don't have to cry, cause he has paid the price. I speak the blood, I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, the blood, eternal cleansing blood. I don't have to cry, cause you have paid the price. Listen, what I'm about to teach you now is what I did in my own life. It's not what I was taught, it's what I practice. I'm praying that your eyes will be open in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus for someone a way out has finally come for you if you do not understand the law of substitution you will never be able to silence the voices of evil altars and you will never be able to walk in dominion Number one, the first key when you want to tear down altars, you must also be ready to set up a righteous one. 
if you are not ready to set up a righteous altar then do not waste your time trying to tear down one did you hear what I said every time you are tired of the speakings of an evil altar and you want to tear it down then you must be prepared to take the responsibility of concurrently setting up a righteous altar that must be initiated by light maintained by discipline number one the first key to tearing down altars is breaking the hold of those demonic altars by engaging the blood breaking the hold of those demonic speakings breaking the hold of those ordinances breaking the hold of those demonic altars or speakings by the blood by the blood by the blood by the blood who is learning you want to tear down demonic altars the first thing is not to start speaking oh my life is no 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 you are dealing with something serious and you are dealing with something that is on a legal basis i remember when i was doing um let them have dominion if you recall i taught you something that i want to repeat very quickly please look at me god forbid but let's assume an, i'm an armed robber and i come or I came to steal in your house do you know the moment i hear the sound of anyone what will i do i will run away because i am stealing it's illegal are we together but let's imagine that someone lied to me that your house were his house are we together and that he could give me access to it and I now paid for it if I hear you coming will I run away no there is a legal basis so when you are dealing with legalities in the realm of the spirit there are rules of engagement are we together now you don't just cast and bind spirits arbitrarily please look up please look up as much as we love to cast and bind is the reason why our casting and binding does not produce results because when demons are operating based on altars there are rules of engagement not even Jesus Christ casted sin out of man as powerful as God is he did not cast sin out of man he had to come down to the earth are we together because a law is that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin and not even God as Jesus Christ could bypass that law are we together so when you want to dismantle evil altars the spiritual instrument that is responsible is the blood of Jesus my God I wish I had the time do you know why because you see the blood of Jesus is not the color red take that out of your mind that's not what we're talking about the blood of Jesus is not just the liquid that falls from a man even though there is a physical expression to that the blood of Jesus is a summation of the revelation watch this now the revelation behind his becoming sin who knew no sin that an unjust man a just man took upon himself the cloak of being unjust are we together and that by that that spiritual law he died a death he did not deserve are we together now and that the basis of that death he did not deserve was that the man who deserved to die in him can now find liberty so every time you invoke the blood what happens in the realm of the spirit is that a memorial is raised are we together now that memorial echoes the fact that an unjust man went through something i mean a just man went through something he should not go through that means no matter the basis of the accusation because of the liberty that just man has brought you are free that is the thing about the blood you have to understand this now most believers shout the blood of jesus but they don't even know what they are saying or that's just mean the liquid the red liquid of jesus like that thing you transfuse to a patient who is not feeling well you will never get a miracle that way blood is an instrument of mercy to you but an instrument of justice before judgment most people think the blood is an instrument of judgment no it's an instrument of justice it raises a memorial the judge himself being god not satan he is the judge of all the earth 
So every time the ministry of the blood is invoked, that memorial is raised in the heavens. How that a just man, sinless, became sin, carried the sin of all the people. Are we together? Every accusation brought upon Jesus was false. So that every true accusation upon you, by his verdict, you are also free. So, Satan has a name with respect to the ministry of liberty. He's called the accuser of the brethren. When it has to do with liberty, watch this. He's no longer a thief. Satan is not always a thief. He changes according to what he tries to achieve. When we talk about justice, you have to go to the court, the high court, the very court that the judge at that point, God does not just sit there as creator. He sits there as judge, the judge of all the earth. The accuser of the brethren comes. Are we together? And that he accuses the brethren day and night. What is the accusation? I have a right to oppress this family. The reason is that the grandfather called me through the spirits and the mediums. And he said, empower our farms. In return, I will give you all the female children in this family. And I have maintained agriculture. They have produced all, the, you know, from their farms. I have maintained my own part. Now a young lady, a young guy, because he came for koinonia, he's asking me to lose my 150-year-old grip over that family. It does not work that way. Watch this. So if you now come and say, well, I think you must go. No. The system of justice must have a basis. Acts are judicial people. Even when they met out judgment, it is not based on sentiment. According to section this, subsection this, this is the penalty that follows such a thing. Are we together? Do you know that in the court of law, now I'm not a judge, but I know this much that in the court of law, you can have the truth, but if you don't know how to communicate it, you will still go to jail. So having the truth is one thing. Knowing how to communicate it in a way that relates to the laws that govern you. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching